Hi, my name is Nina Layden, and I am a children's book author and illustrator, and I am going to read my book, Roberto the Insect Architect. And this book came out originally 20 years ago in the year 2000, and I am reading this with permission from my publisher, Chronicle Books. So this is my book, Roberto the Insect Architect. After I read it, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how I made the illustrations, and then we're going to do an activity about making collages. So here, this is the book, Roberto, first. It goes like this. Even when Roberto was little, he went against the grain. Like most termites, he melted over maple. He pined for pine. Oak was okay, too. But Roberto didn't eat his food. He played with it. You're wasting a good meal, his mother said. Don't you know there are termites starving in Antarctica? But Roberto didn't answer. He was busy daydreaming about becoming a famous architect. Who ever heard of a termite who wants to be an architect, the other termite snickered. Roberto, you should be a chef. But Roberto didn't want to cook. He wanted to build. Hungry to start a new life, Roberto realized that he had to leave. So Roberto packed his bags and took the train to Bug Central Station in the busy, buzzing hive of the big city. The city was a place where you could build your dreams. It was a place where you would be accepted. It was a place where the other termites wouldn't bug you. Roberto beamed hope like a lit up skyscraper. But hope didn't come cheap in the big city. Neither did a place to live. Roberto had no choice but to rent a room in a flea bag hotel that was run by a nervous tick. Roberto had to share his room with a family of bed bugs. So Roberto introduced himself and then he built the bed bugs, their very own beds. After a good night's sleep, Roberto began to look for work as an architect, but things didn't go very well. Show me what you've done, said the architect, Hank Floyd Might. There are no fleas in my, there are no termites in my houses, said Fleas van der Rohe. I'm busy, Antonia Gaudi blurted out. Don't bug me. As Roberto crawled home, feeling like a pest, he was sideswiped by a fly. Watch where you're going, he mumbled. The fly started to cry. But I don't have any place to go, she lamented. Roberto wanted to comfort her, but he was nearly nailed by a carpenter ant trying to fix a rickety shed. And then he was almost run over by a stampede of roaches being chased from a diner. And suddenly, a frantic ladybug flew into his arms. My house is on fire and my children are gone, the ladybug cried. Roberto wished he could do something for the others, but what could one termite do? A lot of damage, Fleas van der Rohe had told him. I'll show all fleas what this termite can do. I'll show them all, said Roberto. Back at the hotel, Roberto came up with a plan. First, he drew some blueprints. He sketched houses and streets. He sketched stores and playgrounds. By the time he had finished, he had sketched an entire neighborhood. Now, I just need to find a good location, he declared. Roberto searched all over the city for the perfect spot. He finally found an abandoned, run-down block full of crumbling buildings. It was a total mess. There are piles of old wood and garbage everywhere. It was just what he was looking for. Roberto hammered a nail. He sawed and sanded. He worked day and night. Like a magician, Roberto transformed the block of junk into a street of extraordinary homes. Each one was a work of art, but Roberto didn't sign his art. Instead, he anonymously sent the keys to the new owners. Then he rolled up his plans and went home. Some very surprised bugs went home, too. Tudor, the fly with no place to go, buzzed with delight. I'm a house fly again, she declared. Grant, the carpenter ant, was the next one to arrive. He dropped his tool belt on the porch. Now I can have a real workshop, he beamed. The roaches were the next one on the scene. You won't find us sleeping in salads anymore, they rejoiced. And finally, Dottie, the ladybug, and her, new ch and her children moved into their new lair. It's perfect, she sighed. It's fireproof. 
Quickly, word spread. Soon, everyone wanted to know who built these amazing abodes. Rumors were flying. Antenna were buzzing. Barbara Waterbugs wanted the exclusive interview. Robin Leach promised to make the builder rich and famous. Diane Spider searched the World Wide Web for the scoop. Stephen Shieldbug wanted the movie rights. And the Insect Inquirer offered a reward to the first bug who brought the builder to light. All day long, bounty, bu bounty hunting butterflies took wing. Paper wasps swarmed the streets. Bald weevils crawled out of the woodwork. But late at night, a click beetle got the shot. The next morning, the headlines screamed the news. Termite chips new homes out of old blocks. It's Roberto, Tudor hummed. He's our hero. Overnight, Roberto became the talk of the town. Architects offered him jobs. Book publishers wanted his story. Ladybugs sent him love letters, and his bug buddies threw him a big bash. At the height of the party, the mayor unveiled the statue of Roberto to be placed in the city park. Roberto built his dream. He opened his own company and became the most famous architect in the insect world. Students studied him in schools. Some of his houses even became museums. But best of all, when little termites play with their food, now their parents say, be creative. Maybe someday you'll grow up to be just like Roberto. That's my book, Roberto, the Insect Architect. And when I did the illustrations for this book, I did it in what we call mixed media collage. And so what I did was I cut up all kinds of things and I use things like catalogs that come in the mail. You know, we call that junk mail. Well, I saved piles and piles of catalogs and I cut up little things that I saw in them for clothing and textures and patterns. And also, I used all kinds of things like pieces of cork and thin pieces of wood. This is called wood veneer. Um, I used pieces of wrapping paper. I used different kinds of recycled papers. And I even used something that's called a leaf skeleton for making bugs wings. It's probably easier to see it here um, against a piece of wood. That's a leaf skeleton. And I wasn't sure how the um, collages I made were going to work. I used glue. This is called book binding glue. It's called PVA book binding glue with a brush. But I also want you to know that it's pretty easy to use a glue stick. And I'm going to show you that in a few minutes. But I wasn't sure how this was all going to look when we published my book. So I did an experiment. This was not in the book. And I used all the elements, like pieces of cardboard, and I used cork, pieces of wood. I made my own blueprints like architects do. There's the leaf skeletons here. And I painted the bugs' faces and their arms and legs and the shadows. And we did a test to see how this was going to work when they printed my book. And this was all done by hand, no computers. And you know what? At night, I dreamed in little pieces of collage when I was doing the art for my book. It took me about a week to do each one of the collages. And I'm just showing you this one because it's taller. Um, the other ones are all really wide. This is what I did for a poster for the book. And everything was glued onto white paper. And um, then uh, I painted, of course, the characters' faces and their arms and the legs and the shadows. And I want to do a little project with you now. And I've already had to start it, so it won't take up too much time. But it's really easy. All you're going to need to have, and you can turn the video off and start it again, you're just going to want to collect up a bunch of these catalogs that come in the mail. And you can use even things like newspapers, too. Um, find as many different things as you can. And you can just use some scissors. These are origami scissors. I love, these are the little guys. I love to use a lot of these. And um, I, what I'm going to show you what I already started, but we are going to work on together, is this. I started cutting up some pieces of some catalogs, and I made this house. And it's made up of some windows, and it has a piece of cork, and I thought this was really funny. I put the mailbox where the chimney goes, because things don't have to go where they actually really go. Um, I stuck a chair out in the lawn, too. 
And what I like to do when I cut up the clothing for my characters is, this is just a piece of clothing I cut up out of a catalog and I made it into a rectangle. And now, because, you know, Roberto is an insect, I'm going to just cut some arms and just give him uh, two arms. And I'm going to give him a couple of legs here because, you know, he's got arms and legs. And I will give him his other two arms on the other side. And this is just really fast and simple. So here's an outfit that I cut up for Roberto. And if I don't know where I want to put my character, what I like to do sometimes is I take my glue stick and I'm going to put some glue on the back of it. You're not going to see that because it's um, I'm doing it here um, off the camera. And I am going to take that and watch this with my glue. Another piece of paper that's white, I'm just going to glue the clothing onto it right here. See? And then I can just draw Roberto. So I'm going to draw some eyes and give him his antenna. And I'm doing this really fast because I'm going to show you. Here's his mouth. And give him some arms real quickly. And some feet here, some feet. And so there I have a little character if I want to cut him out. But I did that a little earlier. So here's what I did. I gave Roberto some clothing. And I put this all on another piece of paper, and I colored in. Um, using a brush and some paint, I colored them in. And now what I'm going to do is this. I am going to take my glue stick and put some glue on the back of him, and I am going to decide where I want to stick him in this collage that I created out of all these different pieces from catalogs here. So he's got, I think, plenty of glue on him now. And... Okay, I'm going to just uh, put him over here near the door, uh, kind of, you know, he can block if you think that's okay. And he's holding a set of keys, by the way. And here's Roberto inviting you into his new house. And um, then if I want to make it look like he's standing there, this is a little artist trick. I'm going to take a brush and I'm going to put some gray kind of colored paint on here. And I'm going to just put some paint underneath so it looks like he's standing. He's making a little shadow there. And I can do the same thing. I'll show you here. We can make it look like this little chair is standing right here, too. And you can do all kinds of things to your characters. You can have lots of them in there. But you can have an awful lot of fun by just taking something that's free that you get in the mail, like junk mail, and taking some scissors, a pen, a glue stick and some paper, and you can make yourself a collage like I did in my book, Roberto the Insect Architect. I hope you enjoyed listening to my book, and I hope you have some fun making collages at home. Thank you so very much.